So we kind of had to figure that video 29, I was going to enter back into like the realm of mindset when it came to cold calling. Right. So this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to kind of touch on white space really quick. And I think the eagerness of wanting to succeed really does blind a lot of people from moving forward with the prospect. Right. And I've seen it before in the past, like people wind up doing business with people that they don't want to do business with in the first place because they understand that they don't have enough individuals that are coming at least on the phone to make a connection with them to move forward inside of a conversation. So what winds up happening is you wind up losing some of your credibility because you're willing to just say yes to anybody. And I got to be honest with you, like nobody just wants the person that's just going to say yes to everybody, right? Eventually, like some of these business owners, you got to remember they've been burned in the past. So if they find a moment of weakness in you inside of these conversations, they're going to use it to exploit it. So whether it's a cheaper price, whether it's getting you to agree to do things that you didn't want to do in the first place, whether it's a longer guarantee, a stronger guarantee, or just something that's going to leave you in the negative at the end of the day, like that's what they're going to do. So one of the things that's most important to do inside of sales is to make sure that you have no white space on your calendar, right? Every activity that you're doing at the end of the day should be something that's moving you forward, right? Like always keep yourself busy because the second you have white space is the second you start thinking that what you're doing is stupid and that what you're doing is not successful and what you're doing is actually going to be a waste of time. And the three to five people in your family that told you that being an SDR, cold call or appointment setter, whatever you want to actually, you know, define it as was stupid, you're going to start to believe them because negativity is truly stronger than positivity. And the way that you avert that is to make sure that positive reinforcement on top of positive activity, which is on top of positive action, which is on top of positive behaviors, right? If everything you're doing is moving you forward inside of your business and it's making a connection with prospects that are looking to do business with you, right? Then the goal at the end of the day is to have too many calls on the calendar, right? Like you should always shoot for that 10x number because if you have too many calls on your calendar, then you're not really going to care if somebody doesn't show. You're also not going to care if somebody doesn't really move forward. Like one of the the best analogies that I got for this was somebody was like, you got to be like the tired doctor at the end of the day. Like the tired doctor is obviously somebody that's super successful. Um, but they've done enough of these sales calls to learn what works and learn what doesn't work and learn how to hit pain points because at the end of the day, eventually knowledge becomes working knowledge. Once things become working knowledge, you don't actually need a linear version of thoughts to make a connection with somebody. Like for example, with my sales team, like I've done this for so long, I've, I've been at it for so many years that if I have fractional pieces of, of thought, I can actually combine them subconsciously in my head to make a decision. For something that I may never do or have done before, I could be like, well, I know this is true. This is true. This is true. This is true. Therefore, if I combine them all together, then this other effect has to be true. Right. And it's really super simple to look at it like that because I've been doing it for so long. Right. So even if you have a lot of white space on your calendar now, do activities to keep the white space under control. Right. The more white space that you have, the more you're going to start disconnecting from the business, the more you disconnect from the business, you're going to realize that your 100 calls turn into 50, turn into 20, turn into 10. And then the last thing you know is that you're only posting on Twitter, you know, a handful of times a week because you feel like that's actually doing something for you inside of your business. Like when it's really not at the end of the day, building content, building brand through organic social media is going to be one of the most time consuming things ever because the ROI on it is so high, but it takes time like it's an investment of time which is way more than the investment of money um and that's why you have to be really careful with what you do you always want to make sure that you have that being built out because there are always going to be people that come inbound from your social media at some point if they understand what you do and you turn each of your social media pages into a funnel but at the end of the day like if you can drive enough appointments to your calendar they're qualified you have your quick connects with them and you're constantly disqualifying or qualifying people inside of that then that's a win for you right one of the most important things that you can do, right? So say you have a, like, I'm going to give you an example. Say you have, you know, it's a Thursday afternoon. You have five, five book meetings on your calendar, right? Like you could say that they're 30 minutes a piece, right? Five book meetings at 30 minutes a piece. So two of them are knocked out for quick connects. They go back into the CRM. So you now have an hour of free time, right? So instead of that hour being white space, start reconnecting with some of the people on your CRM that you were looking to get in touch with next week and just start to see if you can move them ahead earlier, right? Like ask them questions like, hey, I just wanted to check on your progress, see how everything was doing. Oh, I'm doing great. You know, I'm super excited, really looking forward to our phone call. Oh, great. Just a heads up. Like I had a quick opening today. I'm not sure if you want to hop on a quick five minute call. We can just discuss your progress. I can get a better idea of where you're at. Right. And then that's the benefit of using, you know, some additional time that you didn't have that could have went to negativity because somebody didn't actually reach back to you. But instead, you had, you know, 17 more people that were in your funnel that were looking to do business with you eventually. But the buying energy wasn't there. The time wasn't there. The money wasn't there. The the, the um, just the it just wasn't the ready. It wasn't the right time for them. Right. So now you can reach back to all these individuals that 
can move forward or potentially move forward, or you could start to move them forward, right? Inside of what you're doing. And this is why it's super important to get ahead of white space, right? You don't want that because that second that negativity really does seep into your head is the second that negativity will start to take control and it will start to spread and it will start to move in ways that you do not want it to move and you will start to get really uncomfortable with what you're doing. And the second you have self-doubt, remove it. And one of the biggest things that I want to say, and this is a personal experience of mine, um, when I start to get white space, when I start to get that negativity, I actually turn off from social media because I realize that, you know, dopamine spiking is a really big problem. Like when you start seeing all these other people like in their wins, right? And remember, like a lot of internet is marketing. So some of the wins might be slightly embellished. Some of the wins might be realistic. It doesn't matter. But if you're not in a place to accept somebody else's wins because mentally you know that you still have work to do in order to get there, then turn it off, tune it out, and actually get busy doing what you're doing for yourself, right? Like, as of this, like I actually turn off my Twitter because, you know, in running a $30 million sales team and then being the type of person that wants to take on an extra career by building out an agency for DM setting, like it was just too much going on. And I had to turn off a lot of my social media because my brain just couldn't deal with it. It was frying on too many different directions. It was moving too many different places. Um, and it's not that I had white space, but I had chaos, right? Chaos in the form of white space because basically my mind went so many different places. I didn't know what to do with anything, right? And that turned into itself, that negativity of you know, just having all this chaos around me turned everything into white space because I didn't know how to move. I didn't know how to react. I didn't know how to, you know, what behaviors to move forward with. So you want to be careful and mindful and self-aware of like where your pain points are for yourself and really treat those, you know, properly and methodically because just like you're trying to be the doctor or therapist in your sale, like you need to do the same thing for yourself. You need to understand what your capabilities are, and what your shortcomings are. And the same way you audit your week to optimize, you need to audit yourself to optimize. And keeping white space out of it is just a way that works.